Je suis Tati, collectif Namaskar Kundalini.
your own experience what is good. You wouldn't believe that I, as a human being, I'm useless. It's really, it was very difficult. Actually, my father used to tell me so many things about human beings, what sort of a things they are, and how I should appear. It's very difficult to be a human being, very, very difficult. First, I didn't know why the reactions are like these, why people behave like this, and what to do with them how to manage them, it's quite difficult. You can say even William Blake had the same problem. But when you reach that state, then you just enjoy yourself. For you, you have a greater enjoyment than mine. because you are already human beings. So you know about human beings. And then you see your ascent. 
and it's much easier for you to appreciate. For me, it is, I don't know, because I've never known temptations, I've never known all these qualities that you had. So I don't know how to judge what is coming out of it, you see. If you don't have any problems, if you never had any, say, temptations, as you were, you are, what is so great? But from something human you have come to a higher level, it's very creditable and you can enjoy much more than I could enjoy or Christ could enjoy. Because the one who has risen, has grown, now feels the fragrance of his virtues and qualities and his greatness. Then he enjoys himself. So what? I'm sitting here, he'll say, all right, I'm sitting here. Why are you bothered? I'm all right. To him, a proper understanding of this change comes. And he understands other human beings much better who don't have your capacity, your knowledge, your depth, your gravity. Because you have been a human being, now you are divine. Because you have been a human being, you understand other people. So a guru like me, I don't know. It's a very different situation here because I'm a mother. And I've seen these gurus, the real gurus, the very harsh people, I must say. I couldn't understand how they beat people, how they thrash them, they hang them on the well do all kinds of things. I couldn't understand why do they do it. But they have come out from the human level with struggles and fights. So they think that why should others get it so easily? Why not they also have the problem? But you didn't get it onto all these problems. You are different from those groups. You got it, sir in a very simple manner. You didn't do anything. Sahaj, you got it. Absolutely Sahaj. You didn't do anything about it. So your role as a guru is different from those gurus who struggle so much to become an evolved soul. So your attitude towards things has to be more compassionate, more understanding, more loving. As you got it, Sir, others can also get it from you. Don't have to do something horrible. Don't have to shout at them. Some people who met me told me, which is very sad, that some Sajogi said something harsh to them, so they have to leave Sir. But Sir Yogi should never say anything harsh to anyone. He has no right to say. Because without saying anything to you, you got your realization, absolutely free. Without doing anything, you've got your realization. And if somebody is coming to you for realization, you must do it in the same manner. You didn't get it through some sort of a austere, uh, austere, we can say, uh, training. So this attitude must be changed. And I've seen that 
If you have this attitude, then you could be a guru, but not Sahaja. So now try to understand that there is a difference between a Sahaja Guru and a non-Sahaja Guru. They are very hot-tempered, very. And a Sahaja Guru has no business to be hot-tempered. Everything so nice, so beautiful, we have all enjoying this beautiful atmosphere, such love, such compassion, such respect for each other. No competition, no politics. Just if you understand one thing, that you have got everything in such manner, and the, in the same such manner you can give it to others, and you'll respect others the same manner. I think you will be able to... This is a gentleman who's taking photographs, see who he is. He's not supposed to take photographs of all these things. Without permission, he should not take. Real magun gyate chapasna. They are real magun gya. These are mischievous people, you know. So now we are in a Sahaj style. You all know that you've got all the powers, that you are all gurus, that you have achieved so much, you can do so much. Then you have to be Sahaj. You got it, Sahaj. So you have no business to be harsh, horrible, hot-tempered or strict gurus. But it crawls up. I have seen sometimes quite a lot of military business starts in Sahaja Yogas. Military is sort of treatment. That cannot be. No disciplining is needed. They will be disciplined by themselves. They are gurus. Who can discipline a guru? And then they are Sahaj. So your style is very different. None of these gurus knew how to even give realization. I am telling you frankly. They never knew that Kundalini can rise with their hands. Very few people historically have given realization so far. But you people are giving left and right to anybody who comes with you. Just now I said, all right, come along, look at this person. So all of you sit down here, this is it, this is it. You have crossed the limits of science now. You have become science yourself of the divine. And you know each and everything about it, this chakra is catching, that is catching, I am catching, you are catching. But the way we deal with others is the Guru Pada. Kindness, sweetness, concern. That's what your mother has given you. Concern. the concern that flows about each and every person. You have to have concern. But these gurus now, you go, they'll die, kill yourself, eat grass. No, not that way. So you also have to be a motherly guru, a sweet guru, extremely sweet, kindly, 
and understanding, forgiving. Because what is the purpose? What is the purpose? The purpose is to spread Sahaja Yoga. That's the main thing we miss out, that the purpose of our realization or of our birth is to give realizations to others, to spread Sahaja Yoga, to emancipate others, by that to emancipate the whole world. It's our responsibility. If you are responsible, then how do you behave? So no more we have priesthood, no more. Not that one person says so, that person says so, this has happened, nothing of the kind. What you have to say, you say to that person. And you yourself will see how you are reflecting your personality on another person how he reacts and he, how he behaves. Gradually I've seen our collectivity is learning all this. Gradually I find all those horrible dominating people have run away from Sahaja Yoga. Also, I find that people are extremely loving and kindly to each other and also to others. Because you are embodiment of goodness, embodiment of righteousness. You are embodiment of patience, compassion, love and concern. So it is not how you can do it. You are already. But you shouldn't. Just give up. I said, just look at something and watch. Nobody can do that, but you all can do it. So the self-esteem and then assumption. Assume your powers. If you are a guru, then assume your power. You do not assume your power. You still think, God knows if I have the powers or not, this, that. That means you are just a beginner still. No, I am the Guru, all right. We do say, Mother, I am my own Guru, that's all. But it's just saying from the lips. Not only that you are your own Guru, but of the whole world, It's a collective gurudam we have, I should say. Collective. And nothing can escape us now. We are formidable, absolutely formidable. Nothing can escape us. If this is understood, that we have to assume here now, he elects somebody who is a very cruel man, put some clothes on him and say he's the Pope. All right, he's the Pope. But he's not. He's just acting. But inside he's not. That he's infallible. He's fallible. Hundred times. That is not with us. We have all these things within ourselves. We've got them, they are there, we are the possessors of that. Only thing you assume. Once you start assuming, all badhas will run away, everything will run away, and you'll be surprised. Who can stand a person who is a saint, who is a guru, and who knows he's a guru? Nobody can stand. They'll run away. But you have to have introspection to see that your self-esteem is completely correct. It's not just you are thinking you are a guru. I have known some real gurus. 
and I would never allow you to go to them. Because God knows if you can come back in one piece or not. And I've told them that they are real gurus, I know, but don't go near them. Because what they lack is this compassion, this surge style. Because they think they have worked very hard, so why should these people not work very hard? You may be anything. You can be doing this work, that work. You may be educated, not educated, makes no difference. Whether you are rich, poor, makes no difference at all. As long as you know that you are the guru and you assume your power. In that assumption, as if any talent, if you know music, you know you know music. If you know how to cook, you know how to cook. If you're an administrator, if you know administration, you know administration. But that could be also not totally absolute. But you are already in absolute totality of reality. The reality is at your disposal. But you assume it. You're not ordinary at all. We can say you are extraordinary in ordinary. In that, you will just drop out all that is nonsensical. Just drop. Others will see you and will be surprised what sort of people these are, what sort of a life they lead, how nice they are, how kind they are. And the knowledge is so subtle and so great and of such a highest degree. But you never feel bloated up with ego. I have not seen any Sahaja Yogi who says, Oh, I know all about chakras and this and that. How dare you say like that? With the moustaches upward. <laughs> no. With all this knowledge, you bend down, like the tree which is laden with roots bends down. And that humility, that simplicity and that humility gives you the special edge which can pierce into any heart. Thus you become apostles of truth. You can become prophets like William Blake. You can. So many things you will be manifesting and you won't believe yourself. But believe, you are one with that great power, which is God Almighty. They were discussing for ages, I think, about the immaculate conception of Christ. Such stupid people I've never seen. But he is God. He is God Almighty, he is not a human being. He can do anything. How can you judge him and judge his powers and his working? How can you? To discuss about God, have you got his brains? But it's something. A person like me discussing about banking. So I, I, after, say, one or two sentences, I go off. In the same way, when you start discussing God, you must know you do not have that capacity to discuss about God what his relations are, 
how you got a son, this and that. Who are you? What's your own position that you can discuss? And then in that humility you realize it's God Almighty. He's Almighty. He can do anything. Then that faith, not blind, but a real faith in that feeling that God is Almighty. And that now you have become the messenger of that. God Almighty gives you all the strength, all the courage, everything. And His compassion, His love, His attention and His understanding. So this faith should be absolutely one with you. Once I went to meet one real guru. Oh, he was a very horrid fellow otherwise. He has slapped so many people, thrown so many people down from the hills and all that kinds of things he has done, no doubt. But still, for me he has tremendous regards. I went to him. So he just started talking to me as if he would talk to a goddess. He said, how do you find these worldly people here? I said, all right, after all, I have created me. <laughs> yeah, but he said, still, but you are God, with your power, why don't you change them a little bit? I said, that's what is problem. I have given them freedom. I said, all right, it's freedom to you. You can choose if you want to get transformed or not. I cannot force. He said, but God Almighty, you are, you can do anything. I said, I can do everything, but I, I do not want to do certain things. And one of them is, is to take away the freedom from them. That is their freedom to choose. That's given to them because if they have to have the ultimate freedom, they should have their, this little freedom intact. So he is quarreling with me about this. He said, but when you are God Almighty, there could be some other method. These horrible people, what to do? I said, your concern is all right. And I understand because you are a guru. But when I am God Almighty, supposing, then my style is different. I can't be like you. Then he said, that's true. You can't be like me. That is what I found in him. He was talking to me only as if I am God standing before him. And then see, he told all the disciples, you see, you praise, you praise the Lord, you praise her, Sutikara, because God is fond of praise. <laughs> so, I said, really? Yes? <laughs> if you praise the Lord, then he gives you everything, I've seen that. I always praise him. Whenever I want something to be done, I just praise Him and He does it for me. <laughs> so I said, it's true. I must accept. You cannot get to Mother unless and until you have really bhakti from your heart. It's all already sort of a built-in uh, restriction. What can you do? If you don't have bhakti, you cannot get to mother. No, you cannot. You cannot get to God. But if you have bhakti, then you can get to mother. It's written bhakti gamya. If somebody says, all right, raise my kundalini, you 
I cannot realize his Kundalini, not, but for seven lives you won't have realization. But if somebody says, Mother, will you please give me realization once? So not only humility, but bhakti. And bhakti is only possible if you have your faith. That's the thing, is the faith which is challenged nowadays by all kinds of stupid people, intellectuals, these horrible people who are taking out yarns out of their head, or also by science and the so-called Catholic Church and this church and that church. So your faith in God has to be absolutely, absolutely untarnishable. Nothing can disturb that. That's very important. You have seen all the miracles of God. You have seen how you working out His um, powers. You have known all these things. But still the faith in God is missing. The person who has complete faith in God is called as the one is God Himself, they say. It's called as Paramachaitanya. The Guru is called as the one who is Himself Brahma Chaitanya. So, when this faith in God is absolutely established, that there is God Almighty, He is Almighty, and that I am the messenger of that God. Just this understanding, when it becomes absolutely firm in you, then you are in the Guru Pada. I bless you today that all of you achieve that state that you decide in that Guru Pada state. And where, wherever you are, whatever may be your position, whatever you may do, the faith in the God Almighty that is so truly within you will express itself. Not only but that, it will manifest. It will act just like God. So many things can be said. I've said so many things before. And so many can be said later on also. But today we have to remember one thing, that we must have complete faith in the kingdom of God and in the powers of God Almighty. Complete faith. And then in ourselves. May God bless you. I think the meditation is the best way we can really achieve something. So we can go into meditation for about five minutes.
11 rudras <coughs> are awakened and they will destroy all that is negative.
नमस्कार कुंडलिनी 